welcome to the shop. Today we're going to be talking about how to set your MIG welder so you can stop turning knobs and get onto your project. If you haven't tuned in before, my name's Tim and my channel is all about making welding simple. So if you like what you're seeing, go ahead and click that like button and subscribe below. Let's get started. Okay, let's start out at the whiteboard to talk about a few of the fundamentals. So the settings you have when you're welding MIG typically are wire speed and voltage. Sometimes there's some others, but we're just going to worry about those because that's what you probably have. And wire speed is what we're going to set first and we're going to set voltage second to match it. And the wire speed will mostly be based off of the material thickness and it will control your heat, basically. The voltage needs to be set to get the right transfer mode. Now, the transfer mode has to do with how the wire that comes out of your MIG gun interacts with the metal below, okay? And it, there's not an arc lit all the time if you're welding what's called short circuit uh, transfer mode. And that's probably what you're doing if you're just getting started with welding steel. If you're welding aluminum, you're gonna have spray transfer so it'll sound a little more like a hiss uh, and, and that'll be a little different, but the principles still apply in this video. You're just going for a little bit different outcome uh, with regards to your transfer mode. But for most of us, we're going to be welding short circuit transfer MIG. And what happens there is the wire comes out when you pull your trigger, it comes out of your MIG gun, and it'll contact the metal and it'll get hot because the electricity going through there uh, will heat up the wire from uh, electrical resistance and then that will uh, melt off and you'll form an electrical arc between the workpiece and the wire and then it'll keep getting longer as the wire melts off and longer until it's long enough that the voltage can't maintain an arc over the gap between the workpiece and your wire and you have a new gap opened up and the wire feeds down till it contacts the metal and starts the process over again. And it's important to recognize that voltage and wire speed have to work together in this way so that you get the right transfer mode. And that's why when it's running right, it'll sound like this. All right, so we're gonna set our wire speed first and we're gonna base that mostly off material thickness and the wire diameter. And so you can take a look at this chart here, grab a screenshot. This is based off of some rules of thumb that came out of a MIG welding manual uh, from Miller. And I just did the calculations there for you. So this uh, can give you a good starting point. There's also these little slide rule calculators that you can buy. Uh, I'll, I'll link one of those down in the description. Or you can get on uh, different websites. I know Miller Electric at MillerWelds.com, they have some and they also have a mobile app that will uh, calculate some settings for you. And the, the most convenient place to look really is if you open up the side of your machine, you probably have a chart that'll go based on your uh, shielding gas, your material thickness, your wire diameter, and it'll give you some settings for your machine. And if you're using a machine that doesn't read out uh, wire speed in inches per minute and voltage in volts, it's really just like a one to 10 or a one to 100 uh, type knob then it's gonna be a lot more convenient to just use those settings in the machine. And every machine runs differently, right? So these settings might not work perfectly for you, but uh, it gives you a good starting point, and the wire speed is the main thing. We'll walk through how to dial in your voltage here based off the wire speed um, that you have, and we'll, we'll just do that on some scrap metal, running some test welds. Uh, but before we do that, I just wanna make one note. If you're welding uh, in the vertical, or overhead positions, you're gonna to wanna to dial it back a little bit. You might go down about one material thickness and that seems to work pretty well for me. So go on the lower end if you're gonna be welding out of position and it's a best practice to dial in the weld uh, in the position that you're gonna run. I've got my machine set up here. I've set my wire speed to 60, which is I think where it needs to be and my voltage I've turned clear down to two, even though I know I need to be right between a four and a five on my Millermatic here. So. Anyway, I'll uh, go ahead and start welding and, and you can see that the wire is making sort of a machine gun type sound. And what's happening there is the wire is just stubbing out down against the material because the arc isn't able to burn back very far with that voltage. Remember, because it's going through this process where it shorts out and it burns back. 
and uh, and that's not really running the way that it needs to be. So here with the three, you can see that it's able to keep up a little bit better with that wire speed and the voltage is burning back a little more, but you're getting kind of the same thing going on. Moving on to a four, now it's running pretty good. This isn't too bad. And moving on to a five, this is actually even running a little bit better. And so this is right where I want to be, right? And especially since I'm welding eighth inch thick material, I want to make sure I'm getting some good penetration here. And so five is, is running good. This is what you're looking for. I'm going to keep going, moving on to a six. Uh, it looks like you're starting to get a little bit of spatter shooting out. Because remember, um, the voltage is going to control how far that arc burns the wire back. And so you're starting to get a long arc and a little bit more sporadic activity going on there. And you're going to shoot some material out. So that's, that's one you know, telltale sign that you may be running too hot. Keep them going here to a seven. It's just getting worse. Then here at an eight, uh, all we have going on is, you know, it's not even shorting out. It's just making a mess. Let's take a look at how the welds turned out. So let's start here with our voltage setting of two. You can see how it's just piled right up on top. It didn't have a lot of heat getting in there. It was really just kind of a mess. Getting on, it's just looking better with three, four, five, and six all look pretty good. Now seven and eight, right, you can tell they were running a little bit hot because that arc was extending out. And you see all these big BBs of spatter. Those are from those welds, you know, a little from six, mostly from seven and eight. And it's up here because I was tipping my MIG gun back a little bit, hoping that the camera could see a little better. Um, but uh, anyway, the, the cool thing here to, to notice though is really four, five, and six all seem to run okay. Um, five right here is where I want to be. Okay, so once you've dialed in your voltage and you have it running pretty well as far as the short circuit transfer mode goes, then you can take a look at the weld and see if it's heaped up on top and it's probably too cold and you need to turn the wire speed up and then compensate for that with the voltage going up a little bit and dial it in again. On the other hand, if it's sinking down below and uh, burning through your tubing or, or plate, then you're gonna to need to turn the wire speed down and also turn your voltage down a little bit and dial it in uh, there. And so once you go through that process a time or two, you'll get to where you're doing it really fast and you'll be ready to run. So hopefully you learned something here. If you liked this video, please click the subscribe and the bell notifications below and we'll see you next time.